This is the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. Good evening and a warm welcome to Nusa. My name is Mahawa Aliyu and thank you very much for joining us. Coming up in tonight's edition of the news, Sierra Leone has expressed their 2019 wishes for the country. First Lady Fatima Bill treats over 300 children at State Lodge. Anti-Corruption Commission releases former Minister of Defense on bail. All these stories and more lined up in tonight's edition of News Hour. Do stay with us. Welcome back and thank you very much for joining us for First Story tonight. First Lady Fatima Bio has treated over 300 children at State Lodge. The Christmas street is a way of spending time with the kids this festive season. As Princess Gibson reports, the tweet saw the First Lady in dancing mood with the kids. It's all smiles on the faces of these kids as part of goodwill during this festive season. The kids were excited to be around the First Lady at State Lodge and it could be a memorable event for many of them. First Lady Fatima Bio said the Christmas treat is to extend a hand of goodwill to these kids that is a priority in her agenda. It's a year that you should be able to celebrate yourself. It's a year that we should celebrate our nation. So it's a year of joy for me and I wanted to make sure that anybody who is part of my process or part of what I do knows that 2019 is a stress-free year. This is the year that you just want to focus on the issues and focus on what you're supposed to do and forget about a lot of other things. She said most of the kids deserve such moments that is essential for childhood. I believe uh, you have a lot of disadvantaged children in this country. So this is an opportunity for me and uh, my kids to be able to interact with other children of this country and celebrate something as important as New Year or Christmas. Most of the kids were shy to face the camera for an interview, but excitement could be seen all over their faces. This event is going to be an annual event by the First Lady. Princess Gibson, SLBC News. In 2018 has almost come to an end, which many have described as a year of some developments and challenges as well. Some citizens have expressed optimism and expectations for the country in 2019. In 2018, the country held general and presidential elections wherein we got a new president. We, we, women came together to speak against increase in rape cases all over the country as over 30 murder cases recorded in Waterloo alone. We went around asking Sierra Leoneans about their expectations for 2019. Many believe that it is time for the country to catch up with the development as tries, not only in the sub-region, but in the world, SLBC's Joseph Ture reports. For me, the construction of the Lunge Bridge should commence next year, as that will improve businesses, especially in provincial areas and also for the governments to reduce tax for business people, especially at the to see footballers to be signed on contract and for the league to play, I also want to see peace in the country. Even the league play, league not play, still for the play, and Ariba and I very good in the for we the players there. I want to see prospect and development in all aspects of the country. I also want to see authorities in government listen to citizens, especially on developmental issues.
The Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, Solomon Jamiru, has launched a 50 million scholarship fund for students in Upper Bambara Chiefdom in Kailang District. The launching was done during a welcome ceremony of sons of Upper Bambara Chiefdom who have been appointed by President Bio. The ceremony was organized during the Upper, Banta, Upper Bambara Descendant Association annual general meeting at the Native Administrative Court Barry in Pendembo. Well, Joseph Stanley reports. The Upper Bambara Descendant Association annual general meeting is geared towards bringing together prominent sons of the soils to assess progress made in the past and map out strategies for development in the chiefdom. According to Solomon Jamil, the scholarship fund is meant to assist indigents of the chiefdom to pursue their university education. We have launched a 50 million million scholarship fund to challenge our, our, our young boys and our young girls if they could succeed and be qualified for admission into Furobi College or IPAM or College of Medicine or Jalai University College, they could be beneficiaries of that fund. We have also made some donations towards the Cotsbury and the community and the community center. So this is a fine example. This is what we met our parents doing. This is what we met our elders doing. And we have to continue this tradition. He outlined the importance of the fund, noting that it is in line with the free quality education as well as to promote tertiary education in the country. The Deputy Information and Communication Minister encouraged residents in the chiefdom to take their education seriously as it is key to development, adding that a special fund will be set up to get sponsors for the scholarship. The Commissioner of the Anti-Corruption Commission, Francis Ben Kalfala, described the meeting as a family gathering for development in the Upper Bambara Chiefdom. He said a part of the launching of the scholarship fund, 15 million loans was also provided for the rehabilitation of the Court Barre and the Community Center. The Honorable Member of Parliament, Honorable Alicious Ansumana, thank colleagues from the Chiefdom for their timely intervention, especially in promoting university education. Honorable Paramount Chief Cyril Fouri Gondor II of Upper Bambaga Chiefdom expressed appreciation for the laudable venture and assured the donors that they will use the 15 million loans to give facelift to both facilities. In his contribution, the Social Secretary of the Upper Bambara Descendant Association, Maurice Momo, catalogued development projects, stressing the need for education to be a priority for parents and caregivers in the chiefdom. Other speakers, while making meaningful contribution, emphasized the importance of the scholarship fund to improve university education in the chiefdom. Now, former Minister of Defence, retired Major Paolo Conte, has been released on bail. Mr. Conte was invited for questioning on alleged flouting of procurement procedures when he was in office. Retired Major Paolo Conte was invited by the Anti-Corruption Commission last week Friday in their office at Gloucester Street here in Freetown. You're watching news out the Sierra Leone Broadcasting Corporation in Freetown. We continue with more stories making news tonight. In December, most entertainers organize events as it is the holy, holiday period during which people from abroad and even locals take their vacations. For some people, they like wearing new dresses for each event. Also, most Sierra Leoneans who are Christians put on new clothes on Christmas Day or first Sunday of the year. This normally puts pressure on tailors who spend sleepless nights trying to make dresses for events like weddings, award shows and fashion events. Howard Barry has been looking at the tailoring business during the holidays. This is Wilton Pratt, who owns a tailoring shop at Nimbana Street in the Central Business District area. He's talking to a customer who wants her dress for an event. It is almost 11 a.m. and he is just coming to the shop to start the day's work because he was up all night busy sewing to meet his deadline. This festive season, according to him, is just the same like any other festive season. They work the customer every day in the ad. Every year the customers keep increasing. I have more pressure this year because of the different programs like Miss World, 
near awards and weddings. Abdullahi Ba, who owns a small shop at Benjamin Lane, says this year's business is a bit different. This festive season is difficult for us. The previous festive season I used to sleep in my shop trying to beat the deadline for customers. But this year the customers are complaining of not having enough money. Isabella Adjivon of Ibel Fashion says people come with their clothes to sew but end up not showing up on time to pay for the service of the tailor because they also complain about hardship and high cost of material. Business day, but the problem the business now. There is definitely more work for us, but the problem there is no money. Some people come to us with their fabric and we negotiate on a price, but at the end of the day they don't show up again because some of them are broke. Despite the complaints of the prices of the fabric and cost to sew, people still take their clothes to the tailors to sew as they prefer to get their own designs made by local tailors to buy in, in a boutique. Because it's more cheaper now for sew than for to sew in Australia. And it is cheaper to sew in Sierra Leone than in Australia. I prefer to sew in Sierra Leone because I have big hips. Most ready-made clothes are made for white people and not for Africans with big buttocks. Ready made in India. Ready made clothes are expensive and I can't afford it. So I prefer to buy the African fabric and take it to the tailors. Even the business people who sell the fabric are also complaining. First thing, what they say? In previous years, we start making money in October. That's the time people buy for their relatives in the provinces. But this year, it's difficult and the exchange rate is not helping the situation at all. But this time here, yeah, we need to sell that kind of way we would expect. This festive season is totally a difficult one because we pay a lot at customs and the shop rents are due in January. Now, just like when most people are complaining of things being difficult in Freetown, others say it's the same every year during Christmas. Some people complain that every time there's a new government, they expect things to be really, really difficult. But their expectations for 2019 is really high. I wish, honestly to you now, like the First Lady. I wish I start sewing for people like the First Lady and other celebrities. I want this new government to reduce the tax on certain goods. Things will definitely get better. I believe say 2019. Successful. I believe 2019 will be successful because there are many opportunities ahead. The prices of commodities in the market continue to fluctuate as the country enters the new year. This is an economy in transition as the new administration is just eight months and with fiscal discipline that is now being enforced, many people are with the conviction that 2019 will come with a difference in terms of economic recovery. Reporting for SLBC, Hawabari. Many thanks then indeed to Hawabari for putting that report together. The government has in a press release condemned the press release issued out by the All People's Congress on the 20th of December 2018 concerning the Commission's of Inquiry describing it as inciting. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Suare, said the government will not tolerate any situation that will undermine the peace and stability of the country. The session was held at Slash Conference Hall in Freetown. Joseph Ture was there and he now reports. The Minister of Information and Communications, Mohamed Rahman Suare, said the government will not tolerate any situation that will undermine the peace and stability of the country. The Minister of Information and Communication stated that the commissions are set for persons of interest and not the APC party as a whole. He noted that those who know that they are innocent should face the commission to establish their innocence. But one thing is clear, as a government we are, pro we are voted into office to ensure that we protect the lives property and ensure the stability, safety of each and every Sierra Leonean. As a responsible government, we will not see by, sit by and see anybody topping that process. We will ensure that everybody who gets involved 
and unauthorized demonstrations to create chaos, confusion, mayhem, we face the fullest penalty of the law. The Deputy Minister of Information and Communication, Solomon Jamil, in a press statement stated that the APC party is inciting ethnic violence in the country. APC inciting ethnic violence in Sierra Leone. The attention of the government of Sierra Leone has been drawn to a press release widely circulated on social media dated 28th December 2018, authored by Usman Fudi and Sunez Sexti, General of the All People's Congress. Government notes with deep disappointment that at the time the nation is transitioning into the new year with a great deal of optimism and Sierra Leoneans at home and abroad convinced that with the milestone accomplishments and critical steps already registered by the new direction administration, Sierra Leone is indeed on the right trajectory. A handful of self-serving individuals think they could subvert the people's aspirations in their quest to escape democratic accountability. The pith and substance of the rather diabolic, sinister, and inflammatory press release seeks to generate hate and disaffection towards the Commission of Inquiry, to instigate and or afford persons of interest to the Commission the opportunity to escape justice on the eve of the commencement of the Commissions in January 2019. Apart from the naked trademark appeal to tribalism and regional sentiments in the release, Government views with serious concern a portion of the release in the fourth paragraph as follows. And I read, quote, The APC reiterates its, its position that former APC-appointed ministers and heads of departments and agencies will not subject themselves to any kangaroo court commissions of inquiry which are clearly a targeted witch hunt against Northwesterners and senior APC officials. We wish to inform all and sundry that the APC is not on trial and there has never been an attempt by the Bureau-led administration to persecute anybody. He called on the attention of civil societies and other poor democratic institutions to remind the APC that democracy is not just about the holding of periodic elections but also democratic accountability. SLBC News, Joseph Ture, Freetown. Christmas in Sierra Leone is normally very electrifying, but not without inconveniences like heavy traffic, scrambling for transportation to the provinces, and price hike on almost all commodities. During this period, hundreds of people leave the city to go to their hometowns to spend their holidays with their families and friends. Our own Hawabari decided to spend Christmas on the remote but popular Bons Island to see how people on the island observe Christmas. People from different parts of the country troop to Yagoi town to spend the holidays. Indigents as well as tourists scrambled to get a boat to take them to the island. The road leading to Yagoi is a rough terrain with motorbike riders, passengers and cars covered in dust. It is however the shortest crossing point to the island. Despite the distance from Freetown to the town, people are always eager to go spend Christmas in one of Sierra Leone's colonial capitals. The boats are not enough to take people across, and the life jackets are also insufficient at a time like this. Some, get life jacket. some have life jackets, but as you can see, the number is overwhelming, and some boats are not even logged in the manifest. Because the passengers are now many, we just have to allow them to get to the island without the life jacket. This year's Christmas is a bit different because the president and a host of other dignities spent Christmas here. The Minister of Finance, who also hails from Bonth, was amongst dignities who spent Christmas in the Bonth Island. For the past five to six years, the president has come here for every Christmas vacation. So, quite apart from the Christmas vacation, this year, there was the agro, the agro tourism festival that preceded the visit of the president. It's part of his presidential tour, his back of coming home. It's to look at the opportunities and look at what can be done and brainstorm old, old meetings we've been to discuss with them and see how we can improve here. We want must restore its glory. This is one of the things here at Yagoi Town. Every year, people from across the region. 
of transportation to Banff. It is shorter if one uses speedboat to go across. As ferries and wooden boat, popularly known by Sierra Leoneans as Pampa, take almost two hours on sea. On approaching the island, one can see scars of the slave trade. Even some of the buildings still have the features of colonial architecture still being used by the locals. The deputy mayor says Banff will soon rise again as there are lots of new projects on the way. Of course, uh, on the 3rd of uh, January, um, the sea face project is starting. The internship roads, we are going to start that one, you see. There are a lot of plans really on the way. We are sure that uh, as time goes on, uh, in the wisdom of His Excellency the President, we have the air strip there, you know, at least we can be using a, a taxi plane, you know, that we get people to this place easily for those who may not want to use the sea. And of course, as I was telling you, when one said this Maya Bendicha road is prepared, you can get yourself relaxed at Bendicha and then you can cross over at any time you want to, you know. The Agrotourism Festival, organized by the Ministry of Agriculture alongside the Tourism Ministry, was one of the main events which attracted people from different regions to showcase their products. Yeah, the Agrotourism Festival was conceived uh, when we looked at certain parts of this country uh, and taking into consideration the proclamation of His Excellency the President, retired President Jules Madabio, to make agriculture, marine resources, and tourism as the three ministries that this government will use to turn around the economy of this country. Bonf Island has been deprived for many years in terms of development in different areas. The hospital is one key area that is understaffed, making it difficult for healthcare workers to do their job. Teenage pregnancy is said to be on the increase. The rate of teenage pregnancy is high in this part of the country. We have heard girls between the ages of 13 and 16 that are pregnant. The traditional and customary beliefs are entrenched in them. Girls are prone to teenage pregnancy because they are married off at an early age. Tamba Emmanuel Bundo is visiting Bond for the first time. Visiting it for the first time, um, I really love the place. To start with, I love the place. It's kind of calm, quiet, and uh, very nice to live. And I noticed the the route to the to the island itself. There is no other way, as far as I can see, except you have to use the sea. Riyad Koma is an indigenous of the island. He says the island has been neglected for a very long time. Over the years, um, people used to call uh, Bond uh, Christmas Island. Uh, but over the years, um, those glory uh, we are feared away by uh, uh, deliberate you know, uh, uh, actions uh, from our leader um, in the area of uh, decision making. You know, uh, in the area of allocating resources to bonds, um, bonds, you know, everybody knows bonds is a forgotten island. Bonf Island is located in Bonf District, Southern Sierra Leone. The district comprises several islands and mainland of the Atlantic Ocean. The island is a potential tourist destination simply because of its location and its historical importance in Sierra Leone's slave trade. Bonth provides the best of attraction for tourists. Reporting for SLBC, Hawabari. Oh, many thanks there indeed for putting that report together. And now to end news, our quick reminder of the top stories. 
Sierra Leoneans have expressed their 2019 wishes for the country. First Lady Fatima Biwa has treated over 300 children at State Lodge. An anti-corruption commission has released the former Minister of Defense on bail. Well, that's all in this edition of the news. On behalf of the rest of the team, my name is Mahawa Aliyu. For more about our programs, do send us your comment to slbc.sl. Thanks for watching the news. Good night and we wish you a happy 2019 ahead. Hello everyone, my name is Eben and you're watching SLBC. Don't touch that, that. Peace. This is Emanuela with SLBC. For news, views and comments, always tune to SLBC.